Hi Internet, uh, still in the Caribbean. I want to talk a bit about international organizations, and I mean the type that countries are members of. You've probably heard of some of them, NATO, Council of Europe, um, United Nations, right? A bunch of others. Uh, if you're in the Americas, there's the OAS. If you're in uh, Europe, Europe, you've got the European Union. You've also got the uh, OSCE and a bunch of others, right? And these exist all over the planet. Why? Depends. Sometimes it's for mutual security assistance like NATO uh, or for guaranteeing peacekeeping such as OSCE. Um, or they're for diplomatic purposes like the Council of Europe. Well, Council of Europe is a special one. Its main goal is to try and reduce the risk of conflict in Europe, which is historically a pretty big goal. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is this is a continent, uh, Europe is, a continent where war has historically not been far away. And there's so much work to do there. And a lot of it comes down to making laws, making common agreements about the way in which things should be done. And sometimes that works very well, and other times countries need to be reminded a little bit what, about what it is they signed up for. The reason I'm mentioning this now is I felt that over the last several years there's been a kind of a bit of a slippage, a reduction in the degree to which the international community takes international cooperation seriously. There's been a movement in the direction of more nationalism, there's been a movement in the direction of uh, greater, shall we say, uh, national tribalism in a sense. And one of the things that that comes with is a reduction in the degree to which um, countries just honor the, the obligations they signed up to. It's really important that we don't mess that up, right? We need these international organizations, otherwise we wouldn't have founded them in the first place. Sometimes, yeah, they're not very effective or could be doing their work a hell of a lot better. Sometimes they are staffed with people who are incredibly bad at their jobs, quite honestly. Like, But most of the time, the people working at them are doing their best to uphold a set of principles that were set into some kind of international treaty, often decades ago, often so long ago that the people who run the countries that signed up to them can't actually remember the details of what things were like before those came to be. And so what I'd like to suggest is that if we could take a little bit of a time to just go and read a little bit about why these different organizations exist, right? If we try and learn a little bit about what the historical background of the Council of Europe is, of the OSCE, of um, NATO, right? Um, but also of the, the kind of lesser known ones, um, EFTA, European Free Trade Association, an, an amazing organization that I had the pleasure of working with for a while. Uh, OAS here in the Americas. You know, there's so many good organizations out there. And honestly, we also need to talk about things like the World Bank and the IMF. So I'm going to suggest that anybody watching this go and pick one and read up on it. But also, I'm going to see if I can make a couple of videos in, in the coming weeks, going into one at a time and kind of picking out the details of what it is, why it exists, and why we should care. Right? Good for now.